Hello, my bombaline friends. Have you ever wondered just what estrogen does and how it affects bone health? Today, we're gonna to talk about estrogen and how it affects our bones. We'll also be discussing hormone replacement therapy and natural ways to boost estrogen. I'm Sarah, and I'm a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I'm also a 500-hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga, and I'm also a BoneFit certified fitness instructor. Together, let's have a look at estrogen. We tend to think of estrogen as the female hormone, which it is, but men also have and need a certain amount of estrogen, just as women need a certain amount of testosterone. In women, estrogen has an important role in all things that are related to reproduction. Estrogen is involved in the initial sexual development of girls at puberty, and then throughout a woman's life. Estrogen regulates the female menstrual cycle, supports growing babies during pregnancy along with progesterone, and affects female mood and serotonin levels. Estrogen also affects urinary health, the heart, blood vessels, skin, hair, pelvic muscles, and fat metabolism. Estrogen also has an important impact on protecting bones for both women and men. It's also likely that you've heard that when a woman enters menopause, that she has a large drop-off in estrogen that causes her to lose a lot of bone in a hurry. Have you ever wondered why this is a problem? After all, menopause is a natural part of life, right? When a person has low levels of estrogen, problems can arise. First, I'm gonna share a list of symptoms that indicates when a woman has low levels of estrogen. These can include hot flashes, night sweats, breast tenderness, vaginal dryness, mood swings and irritability, painful sexual intercourse, having a decreased libido, irregular menstruation, depression and anxiety, fatigue caused by disrupted sleep, brain fog, headaches, thinning hair, digestive issues that include constipation, gas and bloating, and slower digestion, gut health issues, increased visceral fat around the belly, and rapid bone loss. Many of these symptoms are signs of menopause, but some are not things that we necessarily associate with menopause, like gut health. So let's look at how estrogen affects our bones. Estrogen has a moderating effect on our bones by keeping bone resorption, also known as bone breakdown, in check. Basically, estrogen slows down how much bone our bodies break down. Once a woman reaches menopause and her ovaries stop producing estrogen, there is a 2-4% to drop in bone density every year for a period of approximately 5-7 to seven years. After menopause, bone resorption, also known as bone breakdown, increases by about 90% from its premenopause level, and bone formation is reduced by about 45% from its premenopausal state. Those are some serious repercussions for our bone health postmenopause. So how can we increase estrogen naturally? We can eat foods that have phytoestrogens in them that mimic estrogen. Our bodies recognize phytoestrogens as estrogen. Foods that have high levels of phytoestrogens include fruits such as berries, apples, pears, grapes, peaches, and plums. Vegetables such as broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kale, and onions. And grains such as wheat, oats, and barley. Nuts and seeds, including peanuts, almonds, sesame seeds, and sunflower seeds. There's also a special class of phytoestrogens called isoflavones. The best source of isoflavones is soy. This includes miso, soybeans, and tofu. Other good sources of isoflavones include red clover, chickpeas, peanuts, green tea, split peas, lima beans, lentils, and flax seeds. Another natural way to boost estrogen is to get enough of the vitamins and minerals that help our estrogen levels. The vitamins that are helpful for improving estrogen levels are vitamin D, vitamin B, and vitamin E. 
Additionally, boron is a trace mineral that helps our bodies absorb estrogen. Another possible path to increasing estrogen levels to protect our bones is hormone replacement therapy. Hormone replacement therapy may not be appropriate for everyone, and it's really important to talk to your doctor about whether you're a good candidate for hormone replacement therapy. If you've had cancer, heart or liver disease, high blood pressure, or a history of blood clots, hormone therapy is not a good option for you. For many women, not all women, ultra-low-dose hormone replacement therapy is a good option. There was a scientific study titled The Effects of Ultra-Low-Dose Hormone Therapy on Biochemical Bone Turnover Markers in Postmenopausal Women, a randomized placebo-controlled double-blind trial. This was published in 2022, and the study found that women receiving E2 estradiol in the amount of 0.5 milligrams daily given orally developed a positive effect on their bones and bone resorption was slowed. Healthy postmenopausal women with a healthy uterus between the ages of 45 and 60 were recruited for this study. The exclusion criteria for this study included women who'd undergone a surgical menopause, had previously taken oral hormone therapy, had cervical or breast cancer, had type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, were heavy smokers, or took blood, blood thinners, thyroid medication, glucocorticoid steroids, immunosuppressive drugs, and bisphosphonates within the past 12 months. I think it's important to point out here that ultra-low-dose hormone therapy may still be appropriate for some of the people that were in the exclusion category for this study. When studies are performed, it's really important to try and limit or keep the variables as small as possible to determine the accuracy of the results for a particular study. In this case, all the different healthcare scenarios are the variables. So it may still be appropriate to do ultra-low-dose hormone therapy with some of these different health situations. Cancer and high blood pressure are among the most common reasons to not do hormone replacement therapy. This study was conducted over a 24-week period. It was set up so that 59 people received the ultra-low-dose hormone replacement therapy and 60 women were in a placebo group. The study was double-blind, meaning that the participants and the researchers were unaware of who received actual hormones and who did not. Women who received E2 in the amount of 0.5 milligrams daily had a significant reduction of their P1NP marker from their baseline that was taken, while those in the placebo group did not see a significant change in their P1NP marker. The P1NP marker is a measure of new bone formation. Here's a quote from the study conclusion. Our results suggest benefits in the prevention of osteoporosis in young menopausal women with ultra-low-dose hormone therapy. For women with less severe symptoms, ultra-low-dose hormone therapy may be sufficient to control symptoms. Personally, I think it's really exciting that researchers see the potential for ultra-low-dose hormone therapy to be all that's needed to treat bone loss for many women. We're talking pharmaceutically here. When talking about hormone replacement therapy, it's also important to mention the Women's Health Initiative from 2004. For many of us, the results from this initiative left us concerned that hormone replacement therapy was not a good option and could potentially lead to heart health problems. However, there was a limited scope to the initiative and much more research has been done and the recommendations from the 2004 study have been walked back considerably. While women who have had cancer, have high blood pressure, have type 2 diabetes, or another heart-related complication are not considered candidates for hormone replacement therapy, most women are potential candidates. The other thing to recognize is that hormone replacement therapy in the general sense is really different from doing ultra-low-dose hormone replacement therapy, with ultra-low dosing avoiding many of the negative side effects. 
If you consider doing hormone replacement therapy, look into ultra low dose hormone replacement therapy and make sure that the doctor that you work with has a firm understanding of the difference in approaches. There are quite a few resources that I looked at when putting this video together, and they're listed in the description for this video. Estrogen is a really important topic when looking at bone health and how to improve it. I encourage you to explore the numerous resources that I share in the description. And if you found this video helpful, please share it with someone that you know and love. And I look forward to talking with you soon.